I'm Cadet Naomi. And I'm Cadet Samuel. You've tuned in to Super Good Academy. We are on the spot. We have a special guest coming into the game today, Lieutenant Commander Aubrey! And we are about to go into overtime, so stay tuned. Cadet Braden, can you tell me of a time when you were generous? Yeah, one time I shared my video game with my nephew. That's very nice of you. And you um, had fun with him while you were playing? Yeah. Yeah, so that's great. Super Kids, that's called generosity. Now let's learn more about the lessons of generosity with Cadet Naomi. Turn into your Superkid manuals to Leviticus 2730, which says, One tenth of the produce of the land, whether grain from the fields or fruit from the trees, belongs to the Lord and must be set apart to Him as holy. Everything we have comes from God, and the first 10% belongs to Him as well. Imagine if we had $10 bills. One was a beautiful crisp one, and the other several were crumpled up and wrinkled. This demonstration is what it looks like when giving your tithes to God. You take the best 10% off the top of what God has blessed you with. The reasons why we give God our best is because He has given us His best. Hey, what's the weather outside? You know, I actually think it's gonna be raining today. Well, that's cool, because I just started learning about the water cycle. The water cycle, and what have you learned so far? Um, that whenever rain comes down, it's called precipitation. That is awesome. Super kids, let's learn more about the water cycle. Goggles check. Lab coat check. I'm Lieutenant Reggie. And I'm Cadet Zoe, and it's time for In, In the, the Lab. lab. What experiment are we doing today, Lieutenant Reggie? We're going to be making a cloud and a vase to demonstrate the water cycle. That sounds complicated. It's actually really easy. All we need is a vase, water, shaving cream, some uh, food coloring, and a dropper. Let's get started. Okay, so like we said, we have our vase filled with water here already. You probably want to fill it about three-fourths of the way full, which is about where we've got it, maybe a bit less. Then you want to take a separate bowl, and we just want to make that um, a different color. So go ahead and add several drops of food coloring to that and just mix it up. We're going to use blue because when we think of water, we think of blue, right? So it makes a lot of sense that if we're going to be having rain, it's going to be blue. I think that's probably enough. Let's go ahead and mix okay. that together. Because um, actually, you don't need, if you want to mix that, but you don't need a whole lot of food coloring and see how like deep blue that is? It's actually a really nice color. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't you say? Mm-hmm. Um, I would actually think that blue is one of my favorite colors and that's very nice. So next we're going to add... Shaving cream. Shaving cream. So if you want to, on this one, just kind of, can you reach that? Just kind of put a layer on the top. All right, and that's a nice, nice layer. That's good right there. Okay, so now we have a cloud, as you can see. You know, does that cloud look like anything to you? Like, you know, some people say a cloud looks like a dog. You see anything? Um, a seashell. A seashell. We have a seashell cloud, guys. All right, so what we're going to do next, we've got our dropper here. I'm gonna go ahead and squeeze that and get a good amount of our water with our food coloring in it. And I'm just gonna kind of drop it into various parts of the cloud. And as you can see, it doesn't go immediately through the cloud. It kind of sticks on the top at first. But as we add more and more, I'm just refilling here. I'm gonna put some in the same spot. Because as you think about it, it's not just a small amount of water that comes to the clouds, it keeps coming, right? Yep. And do you know why that is? Why yeah. the cloud, the water goes up? It's because it evaporates. That's the first part of the water cycle. The water evaporates, it goes up into the clouds. You can kind of see we're starting on the front side here. 
Do you see that? You mm -hmm. see what's happening up here? It's mm -hmm. gotten down to the bottom of the cloud. Okay, yeah. so as you see, like the entire top of the cloud is covered, right? Yes. So like at this point we would say there's a lot of water in the clouds. And whenever it reaches the bottom, it's, look what's happening. It's gonna rain. Right, it looks like it's raining, right? Mm -hmm. So again, that's why we chose a blue because it looks the most like water. But you can see, is it dropping faster or slower? Slower. Slower. It, it, well, is it dropping faster in the water or on the cloud? In the water. In the water, that's right. Because that's what happens whenever, and you see, we just had another breakthrough over here. It hit the mm -hmm. bottom and now it's coming around. It's gonna meet up with the rest of it and it's starting to drop. So that is how you can make a homemade water cycle. It looks really cool. You're right, it does. It really does look like rain falling, right? Mm -hmm. So it's actually a very good demonstration of how that happens because as we talked about, all of the water kind of gathers up here on the cloud and then once it gathers together, you know, it falls through the shaving cream just like it would in a cloud. And then once it hits the water, you can see where the rain's coming and it looks just like rain, right? Yes. It's like the apostles in the upper room. They had to wait for a time, but when they came in contact with the Holy Spirit, it was time for them to go out in the world. That's exactly right. They all came together, just like the water comes together on top of the cloud. And then whenever it was time and the Holy Spirit came, they moved out. And just like the water that fell to the earth, they went out and did what the Holy Spirit needed them to do. There's always something new to learn in, in the, the lab. lab. Picture this, Super Kids. You're at a basketball game, your team is winning, there's 10 seconds left on the clock, you've got it in the bag, right? You're so excited, you're cheering your team on because they're gonna win the game, five seconds left, and then, oh no, the other team scores a basket. Now the game is tied. You know what that means. It's overtime. So today we're going to learn about what happens when we experience overtime in our own lives. Because sometimes we see the promise of God, we're excited, we see it's coming to pass, we're super excited, it's really close, it's really there. And then sometimes we have to wait just a little bit longer. Sometimes we experience overtime. So today we're going to look in Acts chapter one at the apostles. So to set the stage a little bit, Jesus had already been to the cross, He'd already been to the grave and he rose again and he was appearing to the disciples and to many people to show them, I'm back, I'm not dead anymore. I rose from the dead and I am here to talk to you guys about the kingdom of God. So the disciples thought, this is it. This is the end of the game. They asked him in verse six, it says, so when the apostles were with Jesus, they kept asking him, Lord, has the time come for you to free Israel and restore our kingdom? In other words, they're asking, Jesus, is this game over? Have we already run one? Are we already done? And Jesus says, the father alone has the authority to set those dates and times. And they are not for you to know. Verse eight, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you and you will be my witnesses, telling people about me everywhere in Jerusalem, throughout Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. So what does that mean? Jesus looked at them and he said, all right guys, we're going into overtime. I need you to wait. I need you to wait and hold on because I am about to send my star player. I'm about to send the Holy Spirit and he is going to fill you with power so that you can preach my kingdom to the ends of the earth, all right? So what did the disciples do? They could have gotten really disappointed that, man, it's not here yet. Jesus is sending us into overtime. They could have kicked back and relaxed grabbed their popcorn and started munching, right? And just waiting and waiting and waiting and doing nothing and waiting some more and getting frustrated and waiting some more. But that's not what they did. Let's read some more. So they see Jesus in verses nine through 11. He gets taken up to go be with the Father in heaven. And they're standing there looking at the sky like, okay, here's overtime. Here's where we are. Now we've got to wait because Jesus told them to wait for the promise of the Holy Spirit. So the disciples didn't get frustrated. They didn't get scared. They didn't get mad. They didn't get lazy. But it says in verse 14, 
they all met together and were constantly united in prayer, along with Mary, the mother of Jesus, several other women and the brothers of Jesus. So this is the importance of what the apostles did. Their response to being in overtime was to wait, yes, but not to wait and be lazy, not to wait and just sit around and eat their popcorn and enjoy. No, they had action while they were in the waiting. They had action even during the overtime. It says that they were constantly united in prayer. Super kids, what are you doing during the overtime in your life? When the Lord tells you, wait just a little bit longer, my promise is coming, but wait just a little bit longer, wait just a little bit longer. Do you get frustrated? Do you get upset? and think, oh, why can't I have this promise now? Why can't I see this happen now? The disciples could have been that way, right? But they decided to become united in prayer. And super kids, when the Lord tells you that He has a promise in store for you, He means it. That's the truth. You can take His word, you can take what He says here and absolutely believe it. So while you're waiting on that promise to come to fulfillment, you can decide to become united with the Holy Spirit in prayer. You can pray in your special prayer language, you can pray in tongues, and you can get the wisdom from God on what exactly to do while you're waiting during this overtime. So, super kids, the next time that you're waiting on a promise from God, what are you gonna do? Are you gonna reach for your popcorn and just relax your feet and kick back? No. We are going to unite with the Holy Spirit in prayer. We are going to be like the disciples and we are going to pray and wait with expectancy because God who promised is faithful. Now we're going to be going into the... Well, actually, I want to be the host. Well, no, I want to be the host. Um, no, I want to be the host. No, me. Okay, okay. I think we can both be the hosts. Okay. Okay, well, today we're going to be learning about sharing in the witness zone. You're about to enter a zone unlike any other. A place where normal, everyday life becomes anything but and everyday conversations go from ordinary to shocking in the blink of an eye. This is a place where eternal choices are made, where faith meets fear and boldness meets hesitation. This is a zone where kids can become history makers or bolt like a runaway train. So buckle up your seatbelts, get ready for the ride. You're about to enter the witness zone. Hey mom, is it all right if Sally and I go over to the toy section while you get the groceries that we need? Um, yeah, that's okay, but we're not buying anything today. No toys today. Just look and meet me at the front in 10 minutes. Okay, thank you. Yes. yes. Oh, I really want this toy. Mom said we can't buy anything today. I'm so upset. Hey, it's a pretty small toy. Maybe we could sneak it into the car. Mom? I don't think she'll ever know. Good idea. Yeah. You ask mom a question. Well, I sneak the toy into the car. Okay, that's a good idea. Come on, let's go. What you just witnessed was witness own door slam shut. When Kate and Sally decide to hide the toy, they're lying and disobeying their mom. And when their mom finds out, she's gonna lose trust in the girls. But let's see what happens when they're obedient to their mom. Hey mom, is it all right if Sally and I go over to the toy section while you get the groceries that we need? Um, yeah, that's okay, but we're not buying anything today. No toys today. Just look and meet me at the front in 10 minutes. Okay, thank you. Yes. yes. Whoa, I really want this toy. Mom said we can't buy anything today. I'm so upset. Hey, it's a small toy. Maybe we could sneak it into the cart. Mom, I don't think she'll ever know. 
I don't know, Kate. I think Mom would be really upset. Plus, I don't want to disobey her, and that's not how we should treat her mother. You're right, I'll put the toy back. And there you have it. Another open door, another victory. A challenge given, and a challenge met. When Kate and Sally put the toy back, they're obedient to the mother, and their mom knows that she can trust them. This is a zone that challenges every super kid to ask themselves, what will I do the next time I'm in the witness zone? Hey, Titus, looks like we're going, going into overtime. Are you ready? Uh, I think so, but I'm not really sure. What do you mean? Your team practiced a lot, you made it into the end of the game. I have every confidence that we can win in overtime. Well, I know we prepared for this, but it just seems like it's taking too long to be over. I don't know if I'll be able to last till the end. You know, this reminds me a lot of when the disciples were waiting in the upper room after Jesus went to heaven. Really? I never knew the Bible had so much in common with basketball. But you were right about baptism last week, so what about the upper room? Right before he went to the Father, Jesus told his disciples to wait in the upper room. He said that if they waited, they would be baptized in the Holy Spirit. What does it mean to be baptized with the Holy Spirit? I don't think I have time to tell you about that before we have to get back to the game. You'll have to wait until next week. Fair enough. But what about the upper room? Even though the disciples probably didn't know what Jesus meant when he said they would be baptized with the Holy Spirit either, they knew that he had been training them for it this whole time he was with them. So they decided that they would trust him and wait. Just like he said, and he was telling the truth. After a few days, they were baptized in the Holy Spirit. I think I understand. So it's basically got to make the decision whether I'm going to be patient and wait and realize that I did this training or not. Exactly. And next week, I'll tell you all about the baptism in the Holy Spirit. I'm looking forward to it. Now let's go win this game. Hey, do you like basketball? Yeah, I like basketball. What's your favorite team? Um, I think my favorite team would have to be the Dallas Mavericks. And who's your favorite player? Um, probably Luca. Do you have a favorite player? No, I don't really watch basketball. Do you, do you even know who Stephen Curry is? No, I don't. No? Well, let's learn more about Stephen Curry in The Real Deal. Stephen Curry was born on March 14th of 1988. He was the son of a very well-known and very good basketball player. So while he was growing up, he had a lot of opportunities to watch the game up close and learn how to become a great player himself. It paid off because by the time he was 10, he was already getting recognized as a very good basketball player. However, when he went to college, Stephen was only six feet tall. Now you might be thinking six feet tall, like that's really tall but for a basketball player, it's actually short. So he was overlooked by a lot of colleges that are well known for their basketball teams. However, that didn't stop Stephen. He decided to go to Davidson College in North Carolina. He was named the second best freshman basketball player that year in the entire nation. While he was in Davidson College in his freshman year, he scored an average of 21.5 points per game. And his whole time at college, he only missed one basketball game. He became known as the best basketball player ever to attend Davidson College based on score. And he became the highest scorer overall in the NCAA for the 2008 to 2009 season. Curry was so good that he didn't even have to do his senior year of college. After his junior year, he was selected to join the Golden State Warriors. Within a couple of years, he was already breaking records. In the 2012 to 13 season, he scored 272 three-point shots, breaking the record. Then in 2015, he broke his own record again, naming him the overall MVP of the NBA that year. The next year, he broke his own record, scoring 402 three-pointers. He was named the MVP of the NBA for the second year in a row, and this was the first time everybody agreed on who the nominee should be. He's led his team to receive five conference titles in a row, which is a record of its own. Curry is a great basketball player, and he gives all of the credit to God. He grew up knowing God, even attending youth camps when he was a young man. Now he uses his position as a record-setting basketball player to let others know about God. His success reminds us that you can work any job and bring God glory as long as you're following his leading on your life. 
Today we learned about the lessons of generosity. We learned about the water cycle. And we, in the witness zone, we learned about how to share with only one toy. Well, now, do you remember everything that we learned? Because it's time for Pop Quiz. It's time to pop in for Pop Quiz. Our memory verse this month is found in Acts 2, 38, Acts 1, 3, or Colossians 2, 12. Acts 2, 38. Great memory, Super Kids. The title of Lieutenant Commander Aubrey's message was Over and Above, Overtime, or Game Over. Overtime. Good ears, Super Kids. We learned in Lieutenant Commander Aubrey's message that the way we wait is by eating popcorn, praying, or sleeping. If you said praying, you got it right. In Lessons of Generosity, we learned to give only what you can, give laughing, give our best. That's right, Super Kids, give our best. The lab experiment showed us what happens to blank in the sky, clouds in the sky, birds in the sky, or flies in the sky. That's right, clouds in the sky. Super job, Super Kids. Thanks for popping in for Pop Quiz.
Our memory verse is found in Acts chapter 2, verse 38, and it says, Each of you must repent of your sins and turn to God, and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. Then you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Hey, Super Kid, were you watching the broadcast today and you realized that you don't actually have a relationship with Jesus yet? Well, did you know it's as easy as saying your ABCs? Romans 10, 9 says that if you'll confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you'll be saved. So it's as easy as saying your ABCs. You have to admit, believe, and confess. So Cadet Andrew, are you ready? And Super Kids, are you ready to say the prayer of salvation and be welcomed into the family? All right, repeat this after me. Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father. Thank you for sending Jesus. Thank you for sending Jesus. To die on the cross for me. To die on the cross for me. I receive your forgiveness. I receive your forgiveness. And I receive Jesus. And I receive Jesus. As Lord of my life. Of the Lord of my life. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And just like that, Super Kids and Cadet Andrew, now you're part of God's family and all of heaven is celebrating with you right now. And we wanna celebrate with you too. So parents, if that's your child's first time saying that prayer, we wanna know about it. Send us an email at superkids at emic.org and let us know. We'll send your child a certificate and a little something special too. Welcome to the family. Let's work out our faith with power confessions. Every morning, I arise with new strength. God is the strength of my life and my portion forever. God is the strength of my life and my portion forever. Okay, I lay hands on the sick and they recover. I lay hands on the sick and they recover. Thanks for working out with us in the faith gym. Hoo! Well, we've learned a lot today. Yeah, we had so much fun today. I'm gonna miss it. Well, it's okay because we're coming back next week. <gasps> we get to do this next week? Yeah. Super Kids, signing off now. Today, Super Kids, we went into overtime with Lieutenant Commander Aubrey and we learned all about waiting. And sometimes when you go into overtime, you gotta wait and see who's gonna win the game. Well, we saw that the disciples did win the game. And what did they do whenever they waited? Did they just sit there and play basketball or get on their phone? No, when they waited, they prayed. And that's the way that you wait on Jesus and wait for the answers to come. Always remember, Super Kids, stay in the game and keep on praying. We are Super Kid Academy, ordinary kids doing extraordinary things through the power of God's work. Signing off for now. Thank you for watching Super Kid Academy at Eagle Mountain International Church. Kids, get your parents' permission and visit us on Instagram, Facebook, or at emic.org. We'll see you next time at Super Kid Academy.